everybody and welcome back to my channel today we are in front of my desktop computer because i want to show you guys how i budget and really share with you my budgeting tips and how you guys can budget too especially if you are self-employed because i'm a business owner i'm self-employed a little bit more complicated but nevertheless budgeting is important whether you have a steady income stream every single month or whether you are self-employed and trying to navigate your finances. Let's get into it. But before we get into the video, I did want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare, if you guys didn't know, is one of the largest online learning communities out there. I am 100% sure that you guys have heard of Skillshare in the past because they are everywhere. And for good reason. Skillshare has honestly taught me so much and it has allowed me to learn about things that I'm curious about. So whether that is improving my business, my productivity, my efficiency, how to organize a team, how to run a team, which to me has been the biggest learning curve of owning my own business and being self-employed, but Skillshare has helped me with that. There's actually a class that I have been loving listening to and taking notes on, and it's all about how to manage a team effectively. Classes are taught by leaders, also, they're taught by experts in their field, people that genuinely want to teach you about things that they know and skills that are super, super useful. And obviously, if you are not a business owner, if you don't want to learn something professionally, there's also things that you can do to relax on Skillshare. So I always mention this, but I have an iPad and I've been really loving to learn how to use Procreate. Not only just for my free time, I've been doing these like sketches of like pictures of me and my friends and my family. Skillshare has a ton of courses like that. It has graphic design courses. It has how to draw, how to paint. If you guys want to get your free trial of Skillshare and you are one of the first 1,000 people to sign up, you guys can click on my link below and then you guys will get a free trial. But be sure that you do that because it's good for the first 1,000 people to sign up. And if you want to continue learning on Skillshare, it's so affordable. It's less than $10 a month every month after that. So it's definitely something that you guys can squeeze into your budget. And I had to throw that in there. I had to throw a budget thing in there. <laughs> Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and be sure to click on the link down below. There are a ton of different ways to budget. When it comes to budgeting, there are the apps like Mint and Empower, and then there's also the manual way, which is either writing down every single transaction, putting it in Excel, putting it in Google Sheets, whatever you use. I, however, manually budget and I use Excel to do it. I've been doing this for about two, I'm trying to think. It's been about two and a half years now that I have been manually budgeting. It's been quite some time and I started doing it after I graduated college once I wanted to live on my own. And honestly, I do wish that I did it sooner, but nevertheless, I'm just glad that I started and that I feel like I've done really well at consistently keeping up with it since I did start, which is what I hope for all of you watching this video. Personally, I like manually budgeting because when you're manually writing out every single transaction, you can really see where you're overspending versus just having a budgeting app that's like you spent this much money on restaurants this much money on clothes this much money on you know gas travel whatever you kind of just see the grand total of the category but you don't see where you're spending it if you're at a really expensive restaurant that might be a lot of your restaurant budget and so then you can know like hmm maybe i shouldn't order that many drinks out you know or maybe i shouldn't go to a place that has three money signs on yelp anymore so you really can see like each individual transaction um versus just seeing like the grand total of the category so so that's why I personally like manually budgeting. It just, it, it really helps you see where you're overspending. So I'm going to get into my manual budget and how I created it on Excel. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you guys how I sort my money when it comes in. Being self-employed, I don't have an employer that is giving me a paycheck every single month or every other week or however often you get paid. When I used to work for Accenture, I would get paid every other week and I would have that same amount every other week, 40 hours a week. Um, and it was nice, you know, it was that consistent stream of income. Now I have multiple streams of income and they're kind of sporadically paid. So my only consistent ones that fall on the same day every single month is my YouTube AdSense, my manager that pays me out for my brand deals, and then Patreon. All of those get paid out once a month. And then I have WeBloom Social, which is my agency, and I invoice my clients. So it's just whenever they get their invoice, whenever they pay their invoice is when I get paid for those. So that can be multiple times a month. You know, it's just super, super random. So my bank account is really always fluctuating. It's never like 
one day a month I know I'm gonna get paid everything. So that's how my <laughs> streams of income are, which can be very complicated. And it can also be um, a little hard to budget because it's not like you know exactly how much you're gonna make every single month. However, when I do get my money, I split it up in three different ways. So besides what I keep in my business account, which is to pay my employees to reinvest in my business, I split it up into taxes, which is number one. First thing I do is take my money out of my account and put it into my tax bank account. And this is actually a secret that I really recommend you guys do if you are self-employed, set up a separate savings account and have it be specifically for your taxes. So my accountant lets me know I should be pulling aside this percentage of every single paycheck that I get. So every single time I get paid, before I even like look at the number, I'm like 25% is going away. So I calculate 25% of whatever I just got paid and I move it into my tax bank account. This just helps because at the end of the year or when you're doing your month taxes quarterly, you don't really wanna pull from your savings. It can be so hurtful to do that, just see that money disappear. So I have a tax savings account that I just push into there and it makes life so much easier and then it feels like I don't have that money, you know, even though it's in my tax bank account, I don't include it into any money that I can save or spend because I know it's going straight back to the government. <laughs> then after that, I do savings and then I do checkings. For checking, I usually just put in there whatever is going to take to pay my bills and every single month I spend around the same. Of course, there are some months that I'm spending way more than I should or some months where I'm not really spending as much and it's a unusual month, but usually I have an idea of what I'm gonna spend every single month. So for my checking account, I really just put whatever I need to live off of that month and what I think my um, credit card bills will add up to. So that's what I do in my checkings. And then I always put the rest in my savings because every month is different for me. I don't want to have like a percentage because some months I am, I could be saving so much more than I need to spend. Like even if I did it, for example, 50, 50, let's say 50% checking, 50% savings. If I could save 70% of that, why wouldn't I, you know? So I always try to make saving the number one priority rather than spending. It's not like, I don't look at it in the sense of, oh my gosh, I got paid so much more this month. I can spend so much more. I never try to increase my overall budget because I know that that money could go away soon and my main priority is to save and that's just not the number one priority I have right now so I'm saving as much as I can so some months that might be 80% of my paycheck some months it might be 10% of my paycheck depending on how much I got paid that month if you are someone that has a more steady income stream or a tighter budget what I recommend doing is starting off with saving in mind and saying you want to save this amount of dollars this month so whether that's a hundred dollars this month you start with that in mind so you're not spending that money so you work with the remainder that you have depending on your income depending on you know your situation that might not be possible every single month and that's okay but i do think starting with a savings goal in mind and then working backwards is going to help you save a lot more in the long run especially if you have a goal that you want to reach like if you want to buy a house if you want to you know put a certain amount in the stock market it's just easier to start with the savings goals in mind and then work backwards. As for investments, I always take money from my savings account and put it into my investments. So I don't really go from checking to investment. What I like to have is six months of living expenses into my savings account at all times. Four to six months is what I try to have in my savings at all times, no matter what. But the rest of that, I invest. I do have some money in the stock market right now, but I just purchased a home. So I did save for a down payment. So that went to that investment. I try to save, save, save so that that money can then be invested. And I only keep about four to six months of living expenses in my savings account. So now let's talk about how to begin budgeting. So this is what you guys came here for. I know I'm on my computer, so I might be looking here to be looking at my budget, but I will show all of this to you. And also if you guys do want to download my budget template, I will have a link where you can download it down below. So first you're going to start by writing your salary or your estimated monthly salary. If you're like me and you're self-employed and work backwards from there. So I being self-employed like to either guesstimate how much I'm going to make this month based on contracts, based on clients, or I kind of go with what I made last year, divided by 12 and kind of average the months out. However, whatever works for you being self-employed, you should have a feeling about what you're gonna make this month. Then you are going to write a list of every single expense that you have in a month 
just off the top of your head and split those up into categories. So I'm gonna show you guys my list and something that could be helpful is actually going through your credit card bill and seeing, hey, this is this is what I've spent it on and start like each transaction categorizing it yourself to see what you really do spend money on. So mine goes in the categories of housing, food, personal care, transportation, miscellaneous, and work. And in those categories, it's for example, my mortgage and my power, my utility bills, for food, it's groceries, restaurants, coffee, alcohol. For personal care, it's eyebrows, facial, manicure, pedicure, workout, health insurance. Bambino is in personal care, <laughs> health and wellness. So that's in like my personal care and that can be totally customized to you and your lifestyle. If you don't get your eyebrows done, don't include that in there. But I do, so I included it. Transportation, that would be parking, gas, public transportation, car insurance, travel, Uber and Lyft. As for miscellaneous, it's entertainment, clothing, miscellaneous shopping, so anything that doesn't fit the other categories, gifts and other. And then my work stuff, I have professional services and then I have all my streams of income as an expense to see uh, what my business expenses are. That's what I do and going through your credit card or your debit card will definitely help with creating that list. Um, and again, I like Excel also because you could really customize it and tailor it to your specific lifestyle. Then you're gonna calculate how much you spend in each category that is a set category. So if you have rent, for example, or a mortgage, that's a set category, it's not changing any month. So all of your things that do not change, that are set, I would begin writing those down in your Excel spreadsheet. And then everything else, like restaurants, groceries, coffee, you know, maybe any other personal care expense that you have, I would guess how much you think that you are going to spend or how much you wanna spend or how much you're honestly able to spend in those categories. And you can base it off of previous months if you guys have been budgeting, but if this is your first time budgeting, then just take a guess because each month you're gonna get better at guessing and it shouldn't alternate too, it shouldn't deviate too much month after month. So if you just take a guess the first time, it should, it'll, it'll adjust as the months go on. And I think you're gonna shock yourself at your first guess because my first guess was so off. I spent so much more than I actually thought. After you calculate all of that, everything that you just inputted, that should be the money that you're spending every single month. Um, and that should give you an overall like view and an overall guesstimate on what your budget should be every single month. You might need to put a limit on things. You might need to say my restaurant budget can't increase $100 this month. Like it ha it's a hard stop at 100 or use my budget as a way to just have healthy money habits for the following month, realize where I'm overspending, realize where I could be cutting back on, and just getting a complete overview of my finances. That's another great thing about having a manual budget. You really can make it what you want and you really can make it fit your lifestyle. And as for how I budget for my business, so I separate my budget by my income stream. So as you see here at the top, I have my YouTube income, my podcast income, my Weebloom social income, my Patreon and consulting income. Those are the bulk of my, you know, revenue streams. So anything that falls in the YouTube umbrella, so that's AdSense management, affiliate link, anything Instagram, because I deal like it's like social media based, put in there. My podcast is another, separate thing that I like to track. My agency is obviously something separate. And then my Patreon and consulting, I loop together into something separate as well. I do this so that I can see where I need to invest more, what's bringing me the most money, what's not bringing me a revenue that maybe I need to focus on to bring that revenue up, or is it worth focusing on it, you know? So I like doing that just to see kind of my uh, financial self as a whole with all of my businesses there um, and seeing just where the money is mainly coming from. And then I do have categories for my business. So in the categories, like I showed you, I have something called a Weebloom social expense. I have a YouTube expense. So that way I can see if my if I'm spending more than my revenue and I'm not making a profit, I'm actually making a loss, it really opens my eyes to see where can I cut what am I overspending on? Do I need this subscription, for example? And it's super, super helpful in that sense. So that is why I really recommend having a budget for your business. And you can even have a more fleshed out budget where you have a complete separate Excel spreadsheet, a profit and loss sheet of where you're spending your money and you know, having a marketing budget, having a you know employee budget and things like that. But personally, I'm just not there yet. In the future, I definitely will be. But right now I like having my complete like life 
in this one Excel spreadsheet and I like seeing it like that. And I think it works really great if you are a freelancer, if you're self-employed, um, this might work best for you or you might want to make a whole separate Excel spreadsheet. So each month you can increase your savings goal, you can spend less in a certain category, but I do think manually doing it just opens your eyes to so many expenses. You can cancel subscriptions, you can remember some things to return. You know, it just, you can realize where you're overspending. It's just so much more helpful. So I highly, highly recommend everyone that's watching this to try a manual budget for a month and see how they like it. You can choose to update it daily. You can choose to upload it weekly. You can choose to update it monthly. I personally like doing monthly. So as I start the new month, I'm like, okay, I got to get my stuff together now. So that's what I like doing. But of course, everyone is a little different. But that's the beauty of an Excel spreadsheet, which I cannot believe I'm saying that. But it really is. If you guys want to download this spreadsheet, I will have a link to download it down below. This video was super highly requested. I hope that you guys enjoy. My camera is dying and I wanna know how you guys budget. So comment down below any budgeting tips that you have, anything that I might have missed, anything that might be helpful to the rest of the people listening and reading the comments, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.